Two years ago, I was ready to upgrade from my Acura RSX to a compact sized SUV. After doing extensive research, I ended up purchasing a Toyota RAV4. Here's what I think after two years of ownership. The real question is, am I still in love? Now let's talk about all the things that keep the fire burning. The first thing I love about this vehicle is that it has such great visibility. Compared to my last vehicle, I sit up a lot higher. And I can see well out of all four windows. If for some reason you can't see out of the back because someone's head's blocking the view or you have cargo in the way, all you have to do is flip this on the rear mirror and it turns into a camera. This has come into handy so many times. There's large side view mirrors and the pillars in the front don't create much of a blind spot because there's a little cutout on the side. I've never had a vehicle with a backup camera and I don't know how I ever lived without one. I love the compartments on the driver's side and the passenger side. This one is perfect if you have a work badge. And over here, this compartment is great for your passenger if they want to put their cell phone or their keys. The inside of this vehicle is pretty luxurious for a Toyota. The seats are made out of Toyota Softex, which is a synthetic type of leather that's supposed to be more resistant to cracking and fading. There's plenty of headroom throughout the vehicle. It also feels very roomy in the back with the panoramic sunroof. I love the blue stitching throughout the vehicle. It's also on the seats and along the dash. The driver's seat has an eight-way adjustable seat. And let's go around to the back. Here's the center console with the two cup holders. And then you can adjust the back forward or further back. I love the infotainment and the sound system in this vehicle. I have my phone plugged in right now. It's the Google Pixel and right here I've got access to all my different apps. I love that the screen is at eye level so it's easy to minimize driving distractions while using it. There's a JBL sound system with 11 speakers. The subwoofer and amplifier are in the trunk. I love the Android Auto capabilities in this vehicle. I'm currently using a Google Pixel phone and I think it pairs really well with the system. It's super easy to make a quick hands-free phone call while on the road or navigate somewhere quickly while you're out and about. Hey Google, can you call Wicked Pie Pizza? Calling Wicked Pie Pizza. Okay Google, can you navigate to Trader Joe's? Here's what I found for Trader Joe's. Something important to note is that the 2019 models do not have Android Auto. They're only compatible with Apple phones. So how efficient is the Toyota RAV4 Hybrid? I'm currently getting about 36 miles per gallon, and in the summer months, I'll usually get closer to 42. For the size of the vehicle and it being all-wheel drive, I have no complaints. My favorite part of the vehicle is the panoramic sunroof. I love how it lets in extra natural light. It's also really cool when it's raining, and unfortunately, it's been raining a lot in Washington. Another awesome feature in this vehicle is this hold button. I didn't realize how much I'd be using this, but super convenient when you're sitting at a red light or waiting in line for fast food, no need to keep your foot on that brake pedal. The XSE model comes with heated seats and a heated steering wheel. And now that I have these, I can't imagine life without them. Winters are so much nicer in this car. I love the body style of this vehicle. I still catch myself doing double takes when I walk away. I love the way Toyota redesigned the front end. I also love the black gloss accents on the fenders, the wheels, and the roof. The last thing anyone wants in their new vehicle is a flat tire. If you do get a flat tire, don't worry. There's a full-size tire in the back, which is really cool because a lot of newer vehicles do not come with one. So we're going to go for a quick drive so we can talk horsepower and safety features. The vehicle has Toyota Safety Sense 2.0, which includes blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alerts. So my boyfriend's favorite thing is the lane departure alert and the dynamic radar cruise control. Right now I have the lane trace assist on, and you can tell if I start scooting over to the right, the wheel is going to start turning to the left and pull me back in my lane. The lane trace assist applies extra steering support and helps keep you centered in your lane 
which is ideal for highway driving. With the dynamic cruise control, you can just set it and forget it. There's no need to push on the brake pedal if the person in front of you starts to slow down. I was concerned about having enough horsepower because I frequently encounter semis and need to pass them on my commute. In this vehicle, it is no problem at all. In this car, passing other vehicles is effortless and it's easy to get up to speed on the highway very quickly. So the hybrid model actually has more horsepower than the gas model, 219 horsepower to be exact. After 33,000 miles and two years of ownership, I do have a few complaints. The first year I had this vehicle, the tabs were $600. Last year, they were $575, and that includes a $75 hybrid tax. That's the most money I have ever paid for tabs in my entire life. So there's an issue with the 2019 and 2020 RAV4 hybrids where the gas tanks aren't filling to full capacity. This is the issue. It's a 14 and a half gallon gas tank, but when you go to the gas station after your tanks is empty, you can only get about nine and a half gallons in the tank. At least that was my experience. And then you get in the vehicle after the pump has completely clicked off and your gas tank reader shows less than full. I knew this going in, but I decided to wing it and hope that my vehicle wasn't affected. Unfortunately, it was. Toyota came out with a fix about one year later where they would replace the fuel gauge sensor and the gas tank if needed. I ended up having both of those replaced and I haven't had any issues ever since then. After having the vehicle for a few months, I started hearing a rattle in the front of the vehicle. It was this metal on metal buzzing sound and I only mainly heard it um, on the freeways. So this meant another trip back to Toyota. Luckily, it was a quick fix. They were able to diagnose the problem. It was a brake sensor, um, brake pedal sensor. So they replaced it and I haven't heard the rattle ever since. One thing that surprised me was that the passenger side did not have power seats. So I've summed up all the things I love and a few of my complaints. And overall, I still really love this vehicle and I'm so happy that I made the upgrade. If you guys are considering purchasing a Toyota RAV4 or want any future updates, let me know in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.